In this video, I'm gonna show you how I take a song that's not jazz and make it jazz. In this video, I'm gonna take a song that very much isn't jazz, specifically the hymn Amazing Grace, and I'm gonna show you what I do in order to take it from its original form to something that you'd put in front of a big band and I'll show you each step I take on the journey. But before we do that, if you like tutorials like this, you've been watching my other videos, why don't you hit subscribe? It, it helps me a lot. And also think about going over to Patreon and uh, joining. <laughs> that, that's, it's most helpful when you join. So why would you wanna take a song that's not jazz and make it jazz? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I don't know, it's, but I'll tell you this, it's one of my very favorite types of arrangements to write, are arrangements of songs that really don't belong in the jazz idiom and kind of making it work. And I've done this a lot of times. Here's a few examples. <laughs> So in this tutorial, I'm gonna take the song Amazing Grace and show you everything I do in order to prepare it for big band. Uh, but I realize that people are watching this from all different parts of the planet, which is amazing. <laughs> I've met people from Thailand and from Germany, and it's unbelievable uh, the reach that these videos have. And uh, so it occurred to me that you might not know the original song Amazing Grace. I don't know, it in the United States, it's very well known, but I don't know how well known it is outside of here. So before we move any further, uh, take a listen. I, I wrote it out in its original form, uh, and you'll hear it as MIDI playback with a flute sound doing the melody and then the piano clunking down some block chords below. Uh, take a listen. That's Amazing Grace. Uh, it's a beautiful hymn just in its original form, but those harmonies don't really say jazz band. So the, the, the next thing we're gonna do is rewrite all of the harmony. <laughs> I like to think of this in terms of four bar phrases. I actually formatted the music in that way because that is what it is. So I'm gonna start with C major because that's our first, our first chord. And from there, I'm gonna fill it out with jazz chords. So, in the same way that I talked about in, in a prior video, I think it was um, uh, Modern Spaceman Harmony, something I couldn't think of a real name for, so I invented one. Um, <laughs> what, what you have to do when you're adding harmonies is, so you look at the melody notes. If you have like a G and an E in the melody, you can't make it a D flat major seven chord. It just, it won't work, right? There's no E in D flat major seven. In fact, that will uh, rub against the third, which is F. Um, and uh, there's no G, which would rub against the fifth, which is A flat. So those are both half steps off. Uh, you can, however, pair any bass note with any melody notes if you understand how to manipulate the extensions. Uh, so there's a lot of freedom here, but I encourage you if you're new to writing jazz harmony, to stick with the basics. So what are the basics? So <laughs> at the beginning of the song, make your one chord the actual one chord that you would have. So in this case, 
I did Amazing Grace in C major. So at the beginning, my one chord is going to be C major. It sounds basic, but when you're trying to really take these, these harmonies into jazz land, for lack of a better way of putting it, I fight the instinct to get really weird right at the beginning. Even I want to do that. I'll see, oh, it's a C on the first chord. Well, I could make that a, a B flat major, major nine. And then, you know, you have this floaty sound right at the top. But in reality, even jazz is grounded. So let's start with a regular one chord. And then think in terms of basic jazz uh, chord progressions. So the most basic jazz vamp or jazz progression, um, well, first of all, is two five. So in... in in C major, we're talking D minor, G7. Uh, but that can be extended to 6, 2, 5, right? So now in C major, we're A minor, D minor, G7, uh, with whatever extensions you want on those. And so as you'll see, once we get into it, uh, a lot of my choices were based on kind of sticking to this. Uh, those kind of progressions really sound like jazz. <laughs> the other suggestion I have is to find points in the melody where you can figure out what chord you want and then work backward, backwards from there. Or work on filling out, you know, we start with C major, boop, and we know we're gonna go to A minor at the beginning of the second phrase. And so now we're working in between. So, you know, I think I went C major, then A minor, D minor, G7. And G7, of course, can just resolve to A minor, so we're good. Uh, but I think I made, I might, I made it a, a G7 sus to sort of reduce the pull back to C. And the, These are things that you can discover on your own at the piano. Uh, the specifics of it, but the process is what we're talking about. So, so at this point, um, I'm going to, <laughs> I spent a lot of time at the piano, figured out what chords I want. Here is Amazing Grace, again, just with the new chords that I've come up with. The next thing I do, now that I have the harmonies figured out, and these aren't set in stone, as I'm writing my melody now, uh, I can massage these to fit whatever melody notes I end up choosing. Um, but now, now I'm, now I'm going to take that song that was previously in 3-4 and bring it into 4-4 four, four, because I'm writing a swing arrangement. <laughs> That's what I've decided to do. We're bringing it into swing. Um, so I'm going to just hum to myself and then transcribe what I've hummed. <laughs> that I'm gonna hum a melody to myself, then transcribe it in the phrasing that makes sense to me. So in this case, I went with something like, two, three, ba, 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 boo, dee, doo, dee, doo, da, ba, da, ba, ba, boo, dee, doo, I think that's I think that's literally what I did. I'm not sure. It's something close to that. Uh, so I'll write that. In this case, what I did, I wrote that whole melody in the first trumpet, and then just did closed voicing for the entire band. So I voiced vertically down, then copied that voicing from the trumpets into the trombones, then copied the trombone voicing into the first four saxophones, and then I composed a Barry sax part that was mostly roots. And uh, I did that throughout. I think at one point I hit some chords that you literally can't do in four notes. Um, 
I wrote a uh, B flat 13 sharp 11 uh, on, I think it's bar nine of the melody, or maybe it's bar uh, 12. But there's a, that chord you literally can't do in four notes. <laughs> it's a six note chord. So I did um, an upper structure triad. I did all the upper structure stuff, like the 13 and the sharp 11 in the trumpets. Um, and then I voiced the trombones below uh, over just the, the B flat nine and then copied that voicing into the saxophones. So the same way we do it like a sharp 11 chord at the end of a tune, we just do it in the middle of the tune. Uh, so remember that doing it as a uh, closed voicing solely like this is not the only way to proceed. All the steps before this where we uh, reharmonized the entire song and then we uh, wrote the melody with jazz rhythm, you're gonna wanna do every time that you're bringing something into the jazz idiom. But this final step where I'm making it into a shout chorus essentially was just a decision that I made in this case. But in other cases, I'd take that melody and give it to some instrument's unison and then have counterpoint to it or whatever texture you want, honestly. Uh, that all depends on the arrangement that you're writing specifically. But in this case, I made it a shout chorus and here's what it sounds like. All right, I hope you enjoyed the journey of taking Amazing Grace from a hymn to a jazz tune. <laughs> Definitely, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit subscribe, check out my other tutorials, check out my music videos. <laughs> Man, I've been producing a lot of stuff and I hope that you guys enjoy it. Uh, definitely hit subscribe, check out my Patreon, and until next time, goodbye.